Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. I am currently in the 1989 Arcade and Kitchen here in Sydney, Australia. I accidentally stumbled across this place on a little stroll through the city and I met this gentleman, Ben, who is the owner. So Ben, tell us how we met. <laughs> I think actually I saw you sitting up there on the corner and I was like, you're Top Hat Gaming Man, how's it going? <laughs> that legit bloody happened. That's how small this bloody planet is, a little tiny bloody channel with 6,500 uh, subscribers and Ben happens to be one of them. Bloody 10,000 miles away, how crazy is that? Being the arcade connoisseur that you are, what would you say is the ultimate arcade cabinet? Okay, for me, I would say the ultimate arcade cabinet is Street Fighter 2. Um, you've got classics, but I think me, Street Fighter 2, that when it came out in the early 90s and how it rejuvenated the arcade scene, uh, paved the way for beat-ups as we know it now. There wouldn't really have been a Mortal Kombat without Street Fighter 2. I suppose many people thought the arcades were already dead in that period. Um, but I think the true golden age of arcades was in the 1980s, so if it's the ultimate machine for me, I'm going to say it's a toss-up between Space Invaders and Pac-Man, because I think Space Invaders first put people's eyes on the machines, and then later after that, with uh, the release of Pac-Man, that got people like women and children involved, because they liked the bloody little character sprite, like, waka 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 waka! So, yes, Pac-Man or Space Invaders for me. Okie dokie. Well, this series of three cabs we have in front of us are called Low Boys. So the idea being they're created to go into things like milk bars and fish and chip shops. Oh, okay. um, so really simple small cabs, so a lot smaller than the big cabs you see at home, the four players or the two players. Um, really sleek design, nice kind of wood grain finish. Very sort of late 70s, early 80s. And the idea is that they're made to switch out the games. So, ah. um, yeah. so at the moment you've got Robocop, Final Fight and Street Fighter 2 along here. But you're telling me you can literally... What's inside them? What do you change? What's so in the change? You just change the game boards. So you've got the PCB or Jammer game boards. Most of these are Jammer harnesses. And you literally just swap the game boards in and out, change your marquee artwork, and away you go. Oh, lovely. Yeah, man. So you've got a bit of Final Fight here. That's uh, You like that game, I suppose? One of my favourite side scroll and beat because it's side scroll and beat right? Like, yeah, you can't, you can't beat good side scroll and beat It's a very interesting game, because... Um, it's the only game I can recall anyway that um, encourages you to punch transvestites in the face. It does. <laughs> it's very of its time. It is. Coming it is. Out, it's, yes, it's definitely a different, different, day different. Day yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a different time, ladies and gentlemen. A different time. Do you get a different experience between playing drama games, would you say? and playing uh, main versions. Oh yeah, for sure. So that's something that is really important here. So we try and make sure that we have original game boards and, as much as we can, keep the original CRT screens. Because a, oh, nice. a lot of our cakes now you see are LCDs. Yeah. Lots of power consumption, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But we want to keep the old CRTs and original game boards. I've and got to say, I, I bloody love these CRT screens. I think oh, they're beautiful. I, I've just always preferred them the LCDs. It's the only way to play games, right? Even yeah. when you got like, the old school games, like the whole retro kind of like consoles, you've got to have a CRT. So we have a high scoreboard here, so the idea is if anybody beats a high score on scoreboard, they get a free coffee and they get put on our website and our social media and all that sort of stuff. So I think the Street Fighter 2 score was basically started by a dad and his kid. Do you know what I'd be doing if this was my cafe? I would be going around and making sure I got all the high scores myself so I didn't have to give anyone free coffee. I wish I was that good. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I think that's the secret there. It's like, I'm okay at these video games, so I'm not amazing. Like, some of the players are getting here are just freaking awesome, and I'm just like standing in awe. Like, last time we had somebody come in and like crack the million on Street Fighter 2, and I was like, oh my gosh. One of the first things I noticed when I first came in here was your lovely red television set with what I believe to be a master system attached to it. Um, one thing I'd like to say is I, um, I think that's great, and uh, I like your business, so can I have a, get, add a few suggestions of things I'd like to um, yeah, see in here? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really into the Virtual Boy at the moment. Are you familiar with the Virtual Boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, obviously we never got that at home, did we? 
and they never got in Australia either. So yeah, no, they didn't. Know, huh? The Americans got it, mm. and the Japanese. Mm. So I believe um, for your local your local base, that'd be a great thing for them to experience as a nice little virtual boy on the stars. Oh, so like yeah. Another okay, one good. as well, the Vectrix. I think that'd be cool. That wouldn't take up much space. Have you heard of Vectrix? I have. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice little vector-based system. They would look quality next to your master system. Okay, I'll have to get one of those. Yeah, sure, yeah, yes. cool. <laughs> And um, arcades as well. I'll tell you about a couple of my arcades I really like to play. Uh, Marble Madness. Oh man, with the trackball. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the trackball. That's what I love about it because essentially you can't play, you can't get a home experience with that because of the trackball. So it's the only way to play. It's really in an arcade. So yeah. if I go to a big arcade, Marble Madness is one of my go-to machines. Yeah, it's a good shout, man. Yep. Okay. Another one as well. Um, Space Harrier. Space Harrier. Oh my god, I'd love to get a Space Harrier. Yeah, they're so good. Is that the one with like the, you hold it with the stick essentially? It's like yeah. a, it's like a jet it's a simulator. Like, it's like, literally yeah. a simulator. So it feels like you're actually flying the ship. Yeah, it's amazing. Cool. Like, I assume that would cost some some money and it would yeah. take up some space as well. But it'd be worth it though. Yeah, I agree. It's That's a great so idea. good. Okay. It's so bloody good. In my hometown back in England, we actually have um, quite a lot of arcades in spite of the seaside. Um, but the, the arcades of today, the, the more modern ones, they're not very good experiences. Like, most of the games appear to be based on these bloody smartphones. Like, they're literally giant smartphones, essentially. Have you seen those things? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen actually a massive crossy road in a time zone here. And time zones actually are opening up a whole load of new stores. So the arcades are kind of coming back in Australia. So back on the rise. Back then. on the rise. Maybe not the classics, but certainly like a lot of the new games. Are still like those new smartphone ones, like um, Plants vs. Zombies or Flappy Bird <laughs> ripoffs on these big. Massive phone. See, that's ridiculous. I find that absolutely preposterous because that's a, the thing I liked about the arcades as a child was there was experiences I could not get at home. Mm. So why would a bloody stupid child want to play a mobile phone in an arcade and pay for it when they can play that app at home for free? That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, what are you doing, marketing men? You're going to kill the arcade scene in England if that's the best you can come up with. Come up with something bloody original. Anyway, thank you so much, Ben, for helping to keep the arcade alive. You are doing a service for not just Australia, but mankind. Yeah. Cheerio! Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Ben. Thank <laughs> you.